All right, so we're all set up and ready to start our milling here. I'm going to be using my uh, rotary table for this op. And uh, once we set it on the table, I went ahead and indicated the center of the face plate there. And then I mounted up this three jaw chuck. This is a low profile chuck used for milling machines and things like this. And I've got a piece that I chuck in here and I indicate the center of that. So our chuck is indicated center. All this is centered up with the spindle. And this is a universal circular dividing head or UVT, Universal Vice and Tool Company. It's a extremely high quality. There's another tag on the other side that says Timken Bearing Equipped. And it's always been a fine tool. So we're going to go ahead and get our part set in here and tighten down and I'll just go ahead and go around to all three of the pinions on the chuck here make sure it's equally tightened up I've already got zero located right here and then on the the uh, hand dial here you've got the minutes so we've got the minutes set to zero and I've got this uh, pointer set to zero so that's where we'll be able to start right there and we'll go ahead and start with our our holes first after we get our holes in there, we'll move on to the milling of the slots. First part, we'll go ahead and, and get our holes in there. Here's another look at what it looks like. So we've got two drilled holes. These are just for uh, half inch socket head bolts right there. So they're going to be drilled and then countersunk for the, uh, for the socket head to go in. Then we've also got two holes that's going to be drilled and reamed. These are for alignment pins. You can see them right there. So I've got some new pins that we'll press in once we get through with the job there. So we'll get the four holes, the two counterbores done, and then we'll move on to the slots. For our hole pattern, we're just going to use the DRO since we're centered up on there, and it's a, you know, a simple XY movement on those without too much fuss. Four and five eighths is the center to center, so we're moving 2.312. That'll be uh, halfway right there. We'll just go ahead and spot them with the uh, spotting drill first and I've still got that set too high so let me back that down all right there we go all right yeah, we'll just move across to the other side and get it done Thirty-three sixty-four drill and no worry of crashing in the jaw because we've got that slot machined in there on the back side at face groove. All right, getting ready to do our counter bore. That's a 13 16 end mill that we're going to use to uh, create that counter bore. That'll give it clearance for the socket head. And then the uh, depth is 3 8 And the, uh, the bolts that go in there, I believe they're, the heads are a little bit narrow. All right, we've got the... Uh, the feed set at zero and I'm just going to count it going up. I've got a stop set on the spindle or the quill up here so that on the other side we can just kind of come down with it like we would like a drill bit. All right, there we go.
So let's go ahead and get our two pinholes put in there. We're gonna we're gonna spot it with this drill here, and then what I'm gonna do is use a letter C drill bit. This will drill the hole right around 242 thousandths in diameter, and then I have a .249 reamer that we're gonna use to ream the hole, and that should give it uh, the proper press fit for the uh, pin that's gonna go in there. Double check. We're at 1.687. Uh, three and three eighths is our center to center distance, so we'll split that in half using our x axis there. Just center it good with that drill. This is more of a, you know, a stubby drill. These work good for spotting them in. And we've got a brand new letter C size drill bit here that we'll use. Just move down and do the other same way we've got our 249 reamer in there let's just ream a little bit of the hole there because the pin actually presses in to the other side and it's quite thick right there where that pin's going through so let's just kind of test it we'll ream it a little ways and then see if the pin is actually loose or if it's tight All right, it feels like it's tight, so we should have an adequate press fit on this uh, on this pin. I wanted it so that it did have an interference fit, and it would press in there, and they would they would keep. Okay, I'll go ahead with our reaming now. Just as easy as that. Double check it one more time. We should be good to go on that. Go ahead and move it down to our next hole. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the slots. But the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to put uh, four holes in there, which will be the ends of the slots right there. We're using a 3164 drill bit. I'll go ahead and just uh, drill a hole where all four of the slots in. And it's on the same circular pattern as the, uh, the two bolt pattern right here, which is uh, four and five eighths. So that's where we're at. So we've got the XY table locked. I'm verified on my DRO up here. And we're zero here and zero here. And so we're gonna go ahead and rotate it around. And I've got, I've got my notes up here so that I can quickly look at it and I don't have to keep thinking about what position I'm supposed to be on. But I've got a little note, you know, I start at 40 degrees. So each, each slot's gonna be 40 degrees off of this center hole pattern right there. And it's a total of 100 degree sweep all the way through there. So I just got a little note up here saying that go to 40 and then from 40, we're gonna rotate it around to 140. From 140, we'll move it around to 220 and then from 220, around to 320 degrees. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I've just got it laid out the way that makes sense to me, the easiest to understand. And we're gonna be rotating uh, clockwise. Come around into 40, and as I see 40 approach, I come up here to the zero on the hand wheel, just like that right there. And we'll go ahead and just snug one of those up. So that is good, I've verified everything, so there shouldn't be any mistakes right here that's being made. Go ahead and give it a give it a drill. This will provide a clearance hole for the cutter to uh, go down in whenever I get ready to mill the slots. I've got the camera right here on the side where you try to I'm using the quill handle. All right. Go ahead and loosen it up and we'll keep rotating it around here to 140. 140 and I'm watching my zero to come up right here. Line up with the hash mark. 
and we're good to go. Just going to do a replay on what we just did right here. 40 degrees, zero here. And we're taking it to 140. And then we're watching for the zero to come up and line up with the hash mark there. Right there. And we'll drill the hole. We want 140, we want to go to 220 now. And from 220 to 320. our four holes right there so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring it on or back around here to our start which will be 40 degrees and we'll set our end mill up let me see we got a couple more there we go 40 and we'll get our cutter set up and start our milling all right it's time to get the milling the slots on this thing and this is, a, this is a procedure that always makes me a little bit nervous, you know, moving this uh, table around and making sure you don't go too far and cut a little bit far into one side or not. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on getting it cut. I've got Abby out here helping me get some of the filming done. She's gonna give me a hand, so let's get started on it. I wanna, I wanna do a touch off. We're gonna be using the, uh, the Tongue Force Rec half inch diameter insert mill to do this job. I think it's gonna do really good but I've got to cut it in stages. I can't cut it all in one depth. So we're going to be making a total of three depth passes through this thing, 200 thousandths each pass. So once I get the depth set, we'll go ahead and set a zero and get started on it. So here we go. I'm running full speed. This thing's got 2720. zero right there. I'm going to go ahead and back it up to uh, our starting point right here. 40 degrees, zero. I'm going to go up 200 thousandths. One. Two. And here we go. Clockwise is our motion. Well, that ain't good. Our light fell. A lot of vibration going on right there. So I apologize about that. <laughs> Let me go get a wrench and tighten that up a little bit. Get you a chip on you? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're slinging. They're hot. Right on the skin. <laughs> that was my first chip, I think. <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. The camera was like very okay. shaky. <laughs> yeah, they land on my arm too. This would be a good time to actually do, you know, have some long sleeves on so that they're not burning my hand up. Yeah, I did but. not choose the best shoes for this help. <laughs> That's <laughs> my fault. <laughs> we'll let it slide this time. Sorry. All right, so I've got my flannel on just because these chips keep hitting my arm and burning them. So this is, that's the only reason I got my flannel on. And uh, Abby went in and put her on her uh, OSHA approved safety toe boots. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're ready to go. I'm going to continue my rotation around to this side. That way I can establish the same depth for each cut, okay? I'm just going to back it off and I know I'm going to go up to zero there. And we want 220 right here. Yep. And 
Go back around our start 40 degrees. Right there. Start point two hundred and twenty right there. One, two, three, four. Looking good. All right, our first two passes look pretty good. So we got one more to make to uh, clear the bottom of that. So now we'll be going up 600 thousandths. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Zero. All right, we got it. We got it cut in there now. Let me show you my one little bozo that I already screwed up. I didn't have the tool all the way up clearing the part. And you can see when I started rotating it around here, I just started skimming that. So that's what I'm talking about. It's real easy to screw up when you're manually doing this on the rotary table. But we got it done. Our half inch insert mill did an excellent job milling that slot right there. You can't even tell the thing has been used. It really did a good job. Now, however, the slot actually needs to be 5 sixteenths. I knew this going into it, but I wanted to use this to, you know, machine the bulk of the, uh, the material out. Now I could, there's a couple ways to do this. We've got a 9 sixteenths in mill, and we've also got this guy we just used, but to use this, I would actually need to do an offset on both sides of the slot. And then of course do it three times again, because I can't cut the whole thing with that. That's not, you know, the inserts are not tall enough to cut the whole thing. So, to keep from doing that on both sides, I think I just want to go in with the 9 16ths end mill and use that to relieve the slot that we need. Hopefully this will do a good job. I'll slow it down for this, to slow down the speed, and we'll go down there and uh, 
mill the slide out. Let's go, let's go see if we can get it done. So what I'm doing is I'm relieving both of the ends with the cutter first so that whenever you come into the end, you're not having to cut the full radius there. I am running 660 RPM now. That's uh, right at 100 surface feet per minute. And we want 320 on the dial here. back around to our 40 position and see how this does. I'm going to try to cut it. It might be too much to cut it at once. I'm going to give it a shot and see what it does. I don't think I'm going to do the full depth there because that's, that's quite a bit. We're going to go half of that. Three hundred thousand right there. Take this off. Definitely trying to be a little grabby. It was cutting on both sides there. So I'm giving it a little resistance with the lock here. Trying to keep my movement smooth. It seems to be working fine. work better whenever I'm holding it like this, keeps it from trying to grab it. Good. One more pass, we'll have that slot finished up.
got a slot there. Going around. There's a better look at it. I'm going to go in here and just do a very light chamfer on these holes. We'll use this Noga tool right here. Always works really good. Gonna do a little deburr on the slots now. Still got that little sharp edge sticking up from the milling. So we'll use this guy right here. I got the uh, specific blade. I believe this is the ST101 tip. Doing the inside one is a little bit more tricky there. It really helps whenever you're actually pulling against the uh, material there. So we may just go a different route for the inside. Okay, so our last step for this is to install our two pins. You can see those here on the old piece, quarter inch dial pins, and they're sticking up 3 16 of an inch. So I, I pulled out a couple of these from my rotary bin right here, a couple of uh, quarter inch dial pins. I cleaned them up. They had a little bit of, a little bit of rust on them. So we got those clean. So what I decided to do is I took two pieces well, I cut me two pieces of 3 16 square stock and we'll set them down on there around the hole like that. And I'll get the, uh, we'll get the dial pin started like so. Okay, we'll go ahead and get it started. Started like that. And we'll put those pieces of square stock next to it. And we'll go to the uh, Dake Arbor Press and we'll actually just press those down in there and then, the, uh, of course, the square stock will keep it spaced out just like it should. Go ahead and get this one started in there.
Go ahead and get this uh, thing dusted off just a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and lay a fresh towel right on top of it just to kind of prevent any kind of scratches in the workpiece here. There's the first one pressed in. One last thing that I just about forgot, went ahead and put my uh, mark in there and I did it twice. The first one, I didn't get it very good. You can see there, I only got about half of the A-bomb in there. So I did it one more time on the opposite side. That one came in a little bit better. You see it right there. So now the job is complete. All right, guys, well, there we have it. This piece is all finished up. It is done and it is ready to go. Go back up there to tab. I'm real happy with how everything came out. All of our sizing is just spot on. All of our finishes look good. Just, it all worked out really well for me. It's a good looking part and I'm excited to uh, be able to provide this to tab so he can put it back on his Walker Turner ready to alarm drill press. So uh, be sure to check him out. Crosscut Vintage Designs over on Instagram. Uh, I don't think he does YouTube, but he's pretty active on Instagram, sharing his uh, woodworking, you know, his uh, furniture making, does a, a lot of really high-end quality uh, woodworking, uh, furniture making type of work there. So I'm sure in the future he'll probably share some, some pictures or something of this Walker Turner drill press as he puts it back together. And I'll ask him if he can, uh, you know, later on as he gets back on this project, maybe he can shoot a couple pictures to me or maybe even a little video of the thing running, what it looks like back together. And I'll, and I'll share it with you guys, you know, like a kind of like a progress report later on, but I'm sure he's going to be happy to uh, have this and uh, it's going to be a good part to go back on the machine. And, and just remember, you know, the only reason it broke is because it accidentally fell and hit the floor and cracked. I had a couple folks ask, well, why not make this out of steel or something stronger to keep it from breaking? This uh, cast iron, this ductile iron is perfectly suitable for what the part is. It's just not made to take an impact like it did when it hit the floor. So I like machining cast iron and ductile, ductile iron myself. I know a lot of folks don't. They think that it's too dusty and uh, I think it machines really well. I like it myself. So I'm going to get this thing oiled down. We'll probably use some of the uh, CRC SP350 rust inhibitor to keep it well oiled. I'll wrap it up and we'll get it sent back up there to tab. I'm sure he's going to be happy to have it back so he can start working on his machine. So there we go. I enjoyed sharing this with you. Some fun rotary table work there with the radial slots. 
and uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching. Come on back for some more, and hopefully we'll see you on the next project.